In 2014, the Nike Mercurial looked like this. The Adidas Predator looked like this. The Nike CTR360 was still a thing. But then, Nike shocked the world when they released this the Nike Magista Obra. I don't think there's ever been a football boot to have as big of an impact on the entire industry as this one did. Welcome to episode two of the Retro Review Reboot series. I just wanted to quickly say a huge thank you to everyone that supported the initial relaunch episode, which was on the Vapor One. You guys really seem to enjoy it, which I'm glad because this is the type of content that I really enjoy making. Basically, the premise of this series is picking an older football boot, going over the history of that boot, what it represented at the time, what it meant for the entire industry moving forward, and how it compares to the football boots that we have now. So if this is something that you'd like to see more of on the channel, please support this series and this video with a like. That lets me know that you want to see more. And also feel free to leave your suggestion on which boot you'd like to see a retro review of next down below in the comments. So the Magista Obra One came out in 2014, which would make it six years old now, which I realize doesn't necessarily qualify as retro. It's not that old, but it is the first football boot to market to feature a knitted upper and a mid-cut design. This floppy collar, two things that have now become pretty much an industry standard feature. In the previous episode, we talked about the impact of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 1, which came out in 2002, 18 years ago. And I was pretty adamant that that had a huge impact on the entire football boot industry moving forward. With that said, for whatever reason, whether it's because they didn't want to or because they couldn't, we never really got anything quite like a Mercurial outside of the Nike brand. People tried to do similar things, but always with their own twist. In the case of the Magista Obra One, the reason why I think this is the most impactful football boot of all time is because it came out six years ago, and within that six year time frame, every major football boot brand now has a knitted upper and a mid-cut design, or at least has had one at some point in time. This was so popular that everyone was forced to copy it in one way or another. And what's also really interesting to look back on is how this boot impacted the Nike versus Adidas battle, because you have to consider that this came out in 2014. A month later, Nike would put out the Superfly 4, another mid-cut knitted upper football boot, both of which were extremely popular, pretty much selling out in every single colorway, even though they retailed for $275, basically the most expensive boots you could buy at the time. But Adidas, they had their F50 Addy Zero, the Predator Instinct, the 11 Pro, as well as the Nitro Charge. We'd get a new Nitro Charge, we'd get a new F50 as well in 2015, and then eventually they would pretty much scrap everything and start over with X, Ace, and the messy line, which I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Oh, now I remember, because it wasn't very memorable. It wasn't until 2016 when Adidas launched their own answer to a boot like this in the form of the laceless, mid-cut, knitted upper Adidas Ace 16 Plus Pure Control that people started to care about Adidas football boots again. Because there really was kind of a year and a half, two year span where Adidas was really falling behind Nike in terms of overall popularity. Now, because I'm not the most organized person in the world, at this point in time, I do not know where the original box and string bag is for the launch colorway of the Magista Obra, but I still want to show you what they came with. So I'll show you the alternate launch colorway instead which I have right here, absolutely beautiful. And we're gonna take a look at a few other colorways in this video, so stay tuned for that. As you can see, it did come in a regular orange Nike box. They didn't start doing the silver gray Nike box for top end models until several years later. And all they included inside the box was pretty much just a string bag. This one obviously in matching colors, Hyper Punch, with the Volt yellow strings. Really plain though, just the Nike football branding on one side and the Nike swoosh on the other. No Magista logo or anything like that, which is kind of weird. I think some of them had a Magista logo. Not sure why this one didn't. It gets a string bag rating of 47 out of 60. Point zero. As for colorways, there were lots of them, and I'm sure everyone has their personal favorite. Leave what that is down below in the comments, but I want to give you guys a look at a few. Obviously, I think the most memorable one is the original in the Volt Yellow with the Hyper Punch and black accents. Really does look quite cool. The alternate launch color, which was more or less just kind of a reverse, was this one right here, which obviously features black as a base color, and then the Flyknit is a combination of Volt Yellow and Hyper Punch, 
with the white Nike swooshes. I really like the way that this looks. There was also this one right here, which if I'm remembering correctly, was part of the Radiant Reveal pack, which believe it or not, it wasn't until basically around this time that Nike actually started giving their colorway packs names. Otherwise it was just referred to by the color itself, aside from a few CR7 and signature colorways in general. But this features a white outline and then in the Nike skin top layer, there's kind of like a semi-translucent fade of white with obviously black as a flying at base and then a pink to volt yellow fade right there. And of course, this particular pair is sporting some neon yellow reflective SR4U laces, which I might add look fantastic. And then one of my personal favorites, this being more of a limited edition release, features a black flying at base and then obviously a solid Nike skin covering. So you don't actually get to see the knit itself, but you can see they printed on the camo pattern and kind of like the classic green and black camo, some brown in there as well. Really love the way that this looks. It's featured there on the sole plate and the Nike swoosh in dark gray is also reflective. Let's talk about the origins of the Magista series in general because Magista replaced CTR360, the Maestri 3, being the previous top end control boot option from the Nike brand before we got this. And a lot of people were upset that the CTR360 line got discontinued, but it really didn't. They pretty much just changed the names. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to find pictures online, but there are actually prototype development samples of the Magista Obra one that have CTR360 branding on the boot. So this very well could have been called the Maestri 4, but I think that Nike decided that that wasn't the best idea considering the fact that it was so much different than the CTR360 Maestri models that came before it. And given the new concept, I think they just wanted a new name to go along with that, which I think was probably the right decision at the time. But for those that were fans of the CTR360 Maestri boots with the Kangolite upper, you did have the Magista Opus 1 as an option, which is kind of like the forgotten Magista boot because all the attention as far as marketing is concerned was on this guy right here. As for the boots themselves, just to give you a quick technical breakdown, obviously the entire upper is made out of flying it. This is the flagship feature that was introduced on the Magista to pretty much the entire football boot industry. And Nike had been experimenting with their Flyknit technology a few years prior to this becoming a material that we would see on a football boot. But I think that this was the most refined variation of Flyknit we had seen from the brand in general up until this point. It looks fantastic. It has a little bit of a texturing to it because of the pattern that's in there. You can see, and every colorway was a little bit different. It has this kind of fade from black into pink and then eventually into solid pink from left to right on the boot, which looks really cool with all the volt yellow around it. They went with a translucent Nike skin covering so you can actually see all of the individual threads and how they're knit together. Very, very cool. Obviously the incorporation of ACC technology, very important. A central lacing system pushed slightly to the medial side, which again was kind of a carryover feature from the Nike CTR360 line. And then of course, the incorporation of a mid-cut collar, also made from Flyknit, totally elasticated and really, this I think is part of the reason why this boot became so popular. The way Nike explained this concept is that in development of new football boots, they asked for feedback from their pro players that they have signed to the brand. And they said that the two most important feedback elements that pros wanted in their boots was a quality fit and maximum comfort. And Nike basically came to the conclusion that nothing fits better and is more comfortable than a pair of socks. So why not use their Flyknit technology to create a football boot that fits and feels as much like a sock as humanly possible. And that's how we ended up with the Magista Obra 1. The Flyknit upper, very sock-like, more so than pretty much anything else that we had ever seen. And then the justification for the collar is obviously a sock, would extend up your leg covering your ankle, but it was never intended as an actual performance feature. It was more so a visual element and something that Nike explained would connect your foot to the rest of your leg. This sensation that the boot was an extension of your body rather than something strapped to your feet. So with the inspiration being actual socks, it shouldn't be that surprising that people started calling this style of football boots sock boots. But for me, what's most interesting about this boot in general and the whole mid-cut concept is the design choice to make it mid-cut in the first place because there's nothing about this design that requires this collar to be here. In fact, early on in the early days of sock boots, we really don't see this that much anymore. There were a lot of professional players that would cut the collar off and obviously Cristiano Ronaldo 
famously wore a custom pair of Superfly 4s and Superfly 5s with a lowered collar, basically because he didn't like having the extra material around his ankle. And like I talked about earlier, this was never touted by Nike as a performance feature. And really every brand has never said anything that the mid cut design of their football boot is going to enhance performance. It's really just a cosmetic element that people obviously like the look of, but also have kind of taken it upon themselves to assume that it does things that it doesn't actually do. And yes, I'm talking about ankle support. We'll never get an answer on this, but I would love to know if Nike knew when releasing something like this, that there would be tons and tons of people willing to pay extra for a mid cut collar thinking that it provided ankle support when in fact it did nothing at all. It's also kind of interesting to note that at this point in time, FIFA was really cracking down on players taping over top of their socks in contrasting colors. So as an example, if you wanted to tape your ankles, which a lot of professional players do, for whatever reason, they'd have red socks and then white tape. It's a contrasting color that was no longer allowed. You had to use tape that was the same color as your socks. But for some reason, you could have a football boot with a collar that covered the same area around your ankle as tape would in a completely different color. That was allowed, but tape wasn't. And this is still allowed to this day it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. As for the base, we got a sole plate that wasn't too far off what we saw on the CTR360 Maestri 3, although I personally preferred that. This was a very simple layout, kind of Tiempo-esque in terms of featuring pretty much all conical studs, aside from some bladed support studs and the little toe pick that we see on pretty much every Nike boot now. The sole plate felt quite good. It featured an external heel counter as well, which I'm personally a fan of. And as a base, it was solid, nice and lightweight, decent traction, but certainly nothing extraordinary. And then in in regards to weight, obviously football boots in general were trending towards being lighter and lighter, and the Magista Obra 1 was no different. In fact, the Obra 1 and the Superfly 4, which was the speed boot, the Magista being the control boot, were actually very similar to each other in regards to weight, even though they were marketed in very different ways. In a size 9 US, you can see that the Magista Obra 1 weighs in at 7.2 ounces the equivalent of 205 grams, which pretty much puts it on par with what is technically the latest version of this boot, the Nike Phantom Vision 2 Elite. Now I haven't had a pair of Magista Obra ones on my feet for probably about four years now. And to my surprise, they actually still feel really good. There's nothing about this flying it upper that I think feels dated compared to what we have now. It's soft, it's flexible, touch on the ball is still really nice. The fit of the boot as a whole is also quite good. Something I forgot to mention earlier is that it does utilize Brio cables, which are basically flywire cables within the upper that work with the lacing system. So when you tie the laces tight, despite the upper being really soft and flexible in hand, it actually has some decent structure to it. The one thing that I will say where I think knitted boots, and I would say more so mid cut boots have improved over the years is the construction in the heel. With the Obra 1 and even the Superfly 4, the heel construction is done in such a way where they wanted to make the collar look like it flows from the upper, like it's all one piece, where internally there's a lot of stitching and a little bit of stiffness kind of higher up the back of the Achilles heel. So it wasn't uncommon during the break-in process to experience some blistering, especially if you were wearing a mid-cut boot for the first time. That's not as much an issue anymore now as it used to be back in 2014. So that would be kind of the one point of significant improvement that brands have made, Nike included. But as a whole, if you wanted to wear these today, I think you absolutely could. So to finish this video, I wanna ask the question, is the Magista Obra 1 the best knitted football boot of all time? In my opinion, no. If we're comparing this to the knitted boots that we have now, I do think that this is better than some, but if we're talking about the lineage of this particular line, Magista turned into Phantom Vision, the current model would be the Phantom Vision 2 Elite. Honestly, I'd rather wear the Visions than the Magista Obra 1. I just think it's a better football boot overall. But with that said, by today's standards, the Magista Obra 1 is still a very good pair of football boots. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. If you have any questions regarding this particular boot or suggestions for other boots you'd like to see retro reviews of, leave that down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with a little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.